how can um, businesses use Megaport as they're trying to educate or execute on their digital transformation strategy? Yeah, <laughs> hybrid multi-cloud. I mean, that's that's our our daily conversation, right? Sure. Uh, you know, I think if if I'm an expert at anything, which I, I don't know if I am or not, but uh, yeah, I feel like that's probably what I'm an expert at. I think if you talk about it every day, you probably become somewhat knowledgeable. Like, there's no way around it. <laughs> but uh, you know, the biggest thing about when you start thinking about building, uh, you know, hybrid connectivity or building connectivity to the cloud is, as you know, at 1623, you have Google in your data center, right? You've got the edge, uh, the Google edge in your data center. Customers can connect directly to 623, connect right to the Google network and great for council bluffs, that central region with Google, you know, outstanding option, right? But you know, as you know, not the edge of each cloud provider is not going to sit within your particular data center, right? Or any data center provider. It doesn't. It doesn't matter, right? Right. They're, they're not everywhere. Um, so you have to have a strategy to be able to get outside of your data center and get to the edge if you're going to have a hybrid cloud strategy, right? Sure. Um, and one of the great things about Megaport and where um, you know we fit that need and we we assist some of the the folks that sit within 1623 Farnham. They can essentially connect to our network in 1623 as an example, and we have 700 data enabled data centers across the globe. But you know, 1623 customer connects uh, to our network in your data center. It essentially brings the cloud provider edge uh, to the customer because once they're connected to the Megaport network, they're able to build private connectivity to the cloud provider edge across the globe. So a great example in this particular use case: you're sitting in Omaha, Nebraska. You connect at 820 or 1623. You build a private connection across the Megaport network to say AWS or Azure in Chicago if you want to go east. If you want to go west, you can build connectivity into Denver. You could build it all along the east or west coast, but you can also extend your network outside of the United States. You can build connectivity uh, across Europe. You can build connectivity across APAC. So when we start thinking about hybrid cloud connectivity and um, you know having a strategy and, and building your network, you know, one of the things that we like to say is really future-proofing that network. Sure. Because we all know that in working with our customers that maybe I'm in AWS today, um, maybe <laughs> maybe I don't have any intention of going to GCP or anywhere else, but inevitably someone's going to find a resource in, uh, in another cloud that they're going to want to access and they're going to want to build that connectivity. So you have to have a strategy uh, that allows you to really uh, pivot and make change at a moment's notice. And that's really where our network is a uh, purpose built to facilitate those types of connections. Yeah, that's great. I, um, so I've been in, in the business for about 15 years in the care hotel space. And so I've seen, you know, how, how customers can be successful when they, they have multiple options and as their business changes and scales and whatever, they have to pivot. They have, you know, at a care hotel type facility, you have 50 carriers and ISPs. You can, now have uh, on ramps to cloud different clouds, but then I think Megaport just takes it to the next level. Um, just just to your point, so um, re really love that that you guys have a, a diverse uh, deployment at sixteen twenty three. It's just it's another um, you know builder to the the network e ecosystem. Do, do you have any interesting? Uh, the ICE was a great example, but do you have some other? interesting ways customers or your customers are using Megaport that you can share? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think there's many ways and we continue mm -hmm. to expand. I think what's interesting is our customers uh, sometimes find uh, ways outside of maybe what we had envisioned for the network, which is which is outstanding. Uh, it's incredible, really. Um, I think the other interesting thing is when you talk about hybrid cloud and, and multi-cloud, um, you know, when customers do work in a multi-cloud environment, they want to be able to route directly between those clouds, but also back into their data center. Um, so, you know, as a service type of functionality is, is another great tool to have in the bag. Because um, if you are going to develop a multi-cloud strategy, typically those resources, you want to sit in very close proximity, right? Sure. So a great example here in the U.S. is the East Coast. I mean, Ashburn, anybody who's in cloud and is in <laughs> probably anywhere in the world, but especially here in the United States, you know, we know that uh, that Northern Virginia tech hub is it's unbelievable, right? The data center operators that are there, the, the cloud provider regions, they, they all have regions that sit there, right? So if I'm building out a multi-cloud strategy, that's probably one of the primary places where I'm going to I'm going to build it out. 
Um, one of the great things that uh, tools that we have is a, a virtual routing appliance that a customer can turn up on demand. It sits on top of our private network. It sits that the appliance itself physically sits right at the edge of the cloud provider networks. So if I want to route from say AWS, I have some front end applications that I'm utilizing in AWS and I want to keep, you know, the Oracle databases, people have Oracle databases. I want to integrate those two networks together. You know, one option is doing that over the internet, which, you know, the reliability issues there, security issues there, also throughput issues. An easy way to do that is to have a, a virtual routing uh, type of platform that you have access to. So that's one of the probably unique use cases or main use cases that we see. The other thing that's great about that is I can still offer that virtual edge. I can still build private connectivity back to my resources at Farnham as well uh, at 1623 or any data center across the Megaport network. So that's kind of one of those, uh, I don't know if it's a unique use case, um, but you know, certainly one that uh, I think customers aren't always aware of that they're able to use uh, you know, as a service type of routers uh, as prevalent as they are today. Oh, that's great. Well, this kind of conversation has been amazing and I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, anything else you'd like to add before we head on oh, out man. of here? Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's hard to shut me up, so I don't know. It's, that's a risky <laughs> proposition. Uh, but, you know, I, I think the, the other thing that I would add is uh, that, that we didn't really touch on is, is building in that resiliency as well. Uh, you mentioned out of 1623 Far Farnham that, uh, you know, we have dual fiber, uh, fiber paths from a layer one perspective and then from a layer two perspective, uh, you know, have, we have protection across the network. The other thing that's uh, a key tool to have in the bag, and again, bringing those edge connections into uh, your data center, ultimately from far away, is being able to build that high availability architecture and, and that resiliency across the platform. So the only other thing I would say around that hybrid cloud is, you know, work with a strategy that does allow you to uh, connect potentially in multiple geographical locations. Um, uh, but, you know, also gives you the, the, the flexibility to, you know, manage it as you see fit. And I think that's it. Um, yeah. Maybe there's I'm probably sure, more. I'm sure there's, there's a lot more we could go on forever. But. Yeah, no, we could. I appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, thanks for uh, for hosting, Greg. And uh, it's been a great conversation. And thanks to uh, JSA TV. Yep. Thanks, Mike. And, and thank you, JSA TV. And we'll see you on the next one.